Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with the SCS mod. I've tweaked again with some sound settings, and I'm not sure if I was successful in that. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm never really <laughs> satisfied with anything. And uh, I just want to prevent a situation where you go, like, deaf after I inevitably, <laughs> inevitably freak out about something <laughs> when someone dies. Or when Brassad st steals my kill or something like that. Anyway, let us continue with the purchases, but before we go get to that, I have a couple of small things I wanted to show off. Yes. Well, first let's level up Kiven. And uh, that's a level 5, that's a pretty decent level for him as a ranger. Uh, now, another thing I wanted to showcase was that, remember that Gorion scroll, that letter from his friend? This letter E here, uh, now that we've met him, this is obviously Elminster, uh, so Gorion had some pretty uh, pretty powerful friends, it seems. And now also, one, one thing I wanted to showcase is uh, this information here about the number of kills, and uh, so uh, it's just interesting, just l let's have one minute and to look over these stats, uh, how they look right now. So this is for the whole game, and this is for the chapter. Uh, as you can see, you know, these stats are going to be a little skewed uh, uh, towards the people that obviously have been with us throughout the whole game, or, you know, been longer than, like, you know, for example, Branwen is a very, uh, has been with us for a very short time, so obviously she's not going to have great stats anyway, even if she was doing a lot of work. But this is kind of cool that, you know, the number of kills and uh, the percentage of total kills in the party, so we can see that Sinashira is at 30%, and I wanted to showcase that because to, to really show you the potential of um, Kirinai here, the, you know, with her thrown daggers, you know, she, she has even more kills than Sinashira, um, you know, without really any gear on her or anything like that. Senashira has been wielding that, you know, Warhammer plus two for a while, and I'm generally, like, focusing on her the most when it comes to her uh, equipment and whatnot. But Kirinai here still manages to rock, like, in this chapter, even 38% kills. Um, and then Sena uh, Jahira is at around 10, around 9, 10, 50 kills. Then Branwen obviously has just managed to kill two things so far but she's been with us for a very short time. Now Kiven is obviously like the third killer, the third best uh, party member when it comes to dealing damage and getting those kills. And he's been with us for a while, so his stats aren't, uh, you know, kind of... Um, and uh, MON, you know, just we re-recruited her um, pretty recently, so th this is also something that uh, her her stats are going to reflect. Although she still has 14 kills. She's gonna get some kills with that Wand of Fire, probably. Anyway, let's get back to the purchases, because I wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about some of these items, because they are very, very notable. Um, Alright, so first off is this Cloak of Displacement. This is a decent cloak that gives you a really nice armor class bonus versus missile attacks, and a save uh, saving throw bonus versus three different things, or like, gives you a saving throw bonus for three different saves. But really, when it comes to what you're going to encounter, especially in Baldur's Gate 1, really the save versus death is the only one that really matters. Um, now next is, uh, here's like a quarter staff plus three that you can just buy for yourself if you have a quarter staff user. Um, we're not going to take advantage of that, but you know, it's, it's, it's something. And there's this harp for bards only, unfortunately, that casts domination. Then this. This is one of the major purchases I am going to make in a second. This Wand of the Heavens. This is a wand only usable by divine casters, so druids and clerics. And it casts... like, not only does it have 25 charges, which is really nice, but it casts a very powerful spell, this Flame Strike here. And not only is that a very powerful spell, especially for Baldur's Gate 1. This is a, a wand that's, that's good in Baldur's Gate 2, let alone Baldur's Gate 1. But also a very notable thing about this wand is that this Flame Strike spell is a level 5 spell. So that means that it will go through 
various mage protections like the minor globe of invulnerability and also the globe of invulnerability which protects from spell levels of 1, 2, 3 and 4. And this is level 5 so this will still go through that and damage the, that kind of mage and possibly interrupt his spell. So we're going to get that. Oh, one more thing. Like one of the reasons that we have Jahira with us is so that you know she can use this wand because <clears throat> later on in the game I am going to replace Branwen with a different cleric, and that cleric is going to be our kind of like final party member. Um, but his weakness is that he actually doesn't have nine intelligence. He has a lower intelligence than that, so that means that he cannot use wands or scrolls. But this is a really, really good wand, so I still wanted to have someone um, that would be able to use it. And that's where Jahira comes in. So next up is the Wand of Frost that we're already familiar with. I don't need another one. And then the Sand Thief's Ring is basically the Ring of Invisibility. If you're familiar with Baldur's Gate 2, there are rings like that in Baldur's Gate 2. But they are a little bit different, because in Baldur's Gate 2 they have this one invisibility and kind of use per rest or per day um, and this one has charges it has quite a few charges but you know it functions a little bit differently and now this this is the main deal this is what we basically come for this is an incredibly powerful item especially with SCS and all the nasty effects that uh, mage can mages from SCS can uh, try to inflict upon us just look at all these immunities dude it protects you against pretty much everything or almost everything it starts out with 10 charges i might uh, recharge that item at some at some point but it's and it's so cheap in general these all of these items are so inexpensive now that we have 20 reputation and 20 charisma but you know it's just something that you can get very early if you come here early on in the game that's a very viable route choice to come here early primarily for that greenstone amulet all right so i'm going to get that i'm going to get the wand of the heavens i'm going to get the cloak of displacement i'm also going to purchase these four potions of mirrored eyes because uh, they are going to be useful in where we're going and uh, I'm not sure if I talked about them in the previous episode, uh, but they protect you from petrification and gaze attacks. But this is only uh, for one turn, whereas um, the spell protection from petrification that mages can cast lasts for uh, five turns, essentially. So instead of one minute of real life uh, time, it uh, lasts for five minutes. And I'm going to get these three, uh, three uh, spells. And those are going to be our purchases for now. I don't think I have anything major to sell. I can sell that dagger, I guess. Oh, one more thing. I am going to switch this robe on Imwen. Normally I am a fan of the Knave's robe, but that's mostly for like fighter mages. Uh, ones that uh, are primarily in melee. Or if I'm not going to be facing off against ranged attackers in general, because that save versus death is really good on mages, because mages are, that's one of their weakest saves, save versus death. So that's a really nice little boost for that weakness of theirs. But since we're going to go up against, um, well, soon enough we're going to go up against uh, a lot of archers, and um, in general mages, if you kind of stay kind of in the back with them, they are mostly vulnerable to missile attacks, so I think for now I'm going to equip this robe on, on Imoen. And also, these are better bracers, because those are bracers of armor class 7, and these ones are AC 8. So I forgot to switch that when, once we got the, those bracers. Actually, I did not rest here yet, right? This is what happens when you record like yeah we need to rest yes certainly you want some whiskey so let's rest once I am here. and i'm going certainly. to go back to this house because i want that bastard sword plus 1 and it's not even a regular bastard sword plus 1 i think it's a bastard sword that gives you a bonus against the shapeshifters which is going to be slightly Not relevant in one certainly. situation. Not even slightly relevant, but we're going to 
Yes, indeed. I need to block her entrance. Yes, such menial tasks. And just take this stuff with us. I am it is done. All right. See ya. It is done. Okay. Now we're going to head back south, and along the way, we're going to. By the way, th there's also this farm area, but I kind of consider it to be. You know, you can visit it now. I think. But, you know, uh, w once we open this bridge, it makes more sense to, to visit that. That's a very minor, inconsequential area, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, we're going to, al along the way, because we're our destination is Baragost now, but we're going to still make a stop at it this area, this farm area, and on this map we still have these fishermen to deal with. Because they wanted us to... Uh, well, they didn't provide us with all the information, it seemed, uh, when it came to that quest with uh, that uh, child priestess of Umberly called Tenya. Alright, so let's talk with Sonner. Back, I see. Priestess had much to say about the group of you. Damn it, she'll kill us all for... Hold your tongue, Telman. He, he's like the, the, the brains, the mastermind of this operation. <laughs> Now I warned you, she was treacherous. I don't like being used, Sonner. It makes me... angry. Well, that's it then. The jig's up, isn't it? This guy is the, the jumpy one. That bitch priestess was taking tribute for us for years. The price just ke kept climbing, and we can't say without appeasing Umberly. The cleric of Talos in Baldur's Gate said... Suffice to say, we made other arrangements for our safe passage at sea. So this is also something that you can kind of understand them a little bit, because, uh, like like he says, they were just pawns within the you know the rivalries of the gods or conflicts between the gods, and they were just kind of used because they couldn't really you know go onto the sea without appeasing Umberly. But that toll, I guess, that she wanted kept rising and rising, and then. You know, so so they s uh, decided to seek help from another deity, and it's just, I guess, spiraled out of control. So the deal is off. I don't want to have anything to do with any of these groups. So we've already dealt with the priestess of Umberly. Now we're going to deal with them, and they just go hostile. And that's pretty good because they are not considered innocents, and you can just kill them without uh, any negative consequences. Boom! So here is the bowl, and they also have a flail plus one. That they would have given you as a reward if you uh, just brought the good news to them. And of course, if I did the quest one way or the other, like for example if I returned the, that bowl to Tenya, I would get a little bit more experience, you get a thousand experience for that, I think. But, you know, it's... It's, uh, all about those role-playing consequences, man. <laughs> I want her to be carrying the, these quest items. But she has a lot of stuff that she doesn't need to be carrying. Oh, actually, that's going to be your sword soon. Alright, so we're done with this area. Also, uh, I'm going to be wearing the, this cloak on Senashira for now, and we're just going to switch to Algernon's cloak whenever we need that charisma for making purchases, pretty much. And also, if you're familiar with this item, you might have noticed that she doesn't have that blur effect that normally that cloak confers. And uh, that's because I'm, I'm just having, I just removed it from the cloak, because that, um, you know, having that blur effect all the time can be a little annoying aesthetically, I guess, or visually. Alright, so now let's continue on to Berigost. It is done. And we are going to rest here once and change our spells a little bit. I'm really surprised that I wasn't uh, ambushed yeah, by any of, any of these groups, or any of these bounty hunter groups. It should have happened by now. You're a queer fellow. Alright, so when it comes to Emo and she is not going to need all these spells, we're going to leave one spook in case of an ambush. 
and we're just going to memorize three protection from petrification because that's what we're going to need soon and also after all this traveling you know after all these hours of travel we would get fatigued soon so i'm just going to rest here once your concern so we can recharge now i'm also going to yes certainly i also realized that i forgot something Indeed. and i'm going to go back before we proceed to the basilisks yeah, anyway i can make whatever you wish for a wee little bit more than me competition a, wee <laughs> a little bit more anyway as you can see his dialogue changed here and he's interested in that ankeg shell that we've been carrying that we've uh, acquired in the last episode so he wants to give us 500 gold for it but if we first decline he's going to change his offer so now he says that he's going to uh, he can fashion us an uh, armor out of that shell if we pay him 4,000 gold. So, alright, let's do it. He's going to have it ready in three days of in game time. And okay, that's that done. And this thing that I just remembered about, that I should have done along the way, is. Remember when I said that we were not going to ever going to be back to this map? Well, it turns out I lied because Indeed. there's one cool thing in chapter 3 that we can do here. In this caravan, this area where the caravan for Kagan's quest was, that same place, there's going to be a different bandit group now. Um, I don't think I'm going to use that shield amulet. Let's just have a little bless here. I'm going to just lead on with Jahira. Because there's going to be a group of archers there. Led by a guy called Deke, I guess. And now we need to dispose of them. Oh, come on, my clicking. Let's use our sleep. Yes, oh, you've attacked. Just to make things easier on ourselves. It wasn't very effective. And I just made another mistake by doing that, because Deke is now asleep, and the whole point is that basically there are two ways uh, to, to uh, get some information out of him, basically. You can either charm him, or you can injure him enough so that he initiates a conversation where he wants to surrender and then if we didn't have already the location of the bandit camp um, from Transig's letter th that's basically the point that you can get that location of the bandit camp on the map like we, we already know that it, that it's here uh, we've already uncovered that uh, from dealing with Transig but I just wanted to showcase that you can <clears throat> you can uh, get that information or get that location in a couple of different ways. Alright, so maybe I'll like fast forward uh, in editing so that we don't have to uh, wait here for him to wake up. Alright, so there it is. He just woke up and surrendered immediately. I guess if you kill all of the other bandits around him, he's going to do that. So as you can see, um, all of the dialogue options almost are about... Oh yeah, all of them. It's like, you know, tell me where the bandit camp is. So yeah, he updates your map. We get a little bit of experience. And now he wants to leave, but yes. you know what we do in, in these types of situations. We just give him a chance. Oh, he might just make it. Okay, he, he didn't make it. <laughs> but he, he had a chance. He had a chance. We weren't so cruel as to just execute him. That is pretty terrible. Right, anyway, I'm going to go back to Baragost. 
Actually, this is a really short travel time, so let's just proceed to the temple area immediately. It is done. Uh, here, there's one more thing that we've left for later, and this is this pack of wolves here in the northeastern part of this area. Because that pack of wolves, it has some like dire wolves and stuff, but mostly it has two vampiric wolves, which are the main danger because they are immune to uh, non-magical weapons and they can paralyze on hit. Hello, it's temple so let's try out our new Wand of Fire that I forgot to identify, of course. So let's just use a, a scroll to identify it quickly. We have one on hand. So this is the Wand of Fire. It actually is pretty cool because it has two different spells that it can cast, kind of like a level 6 fireball, and actually a more powerful version of Agonazar's Scorcher. If you memorize this spell, uh, it's not going to do that much damage. Right, so let's try out our new <laughs> Wand of Fire and throw in a, a little fireball here. What do you want? And we're going to use our ranged weapons on the non-vampiric wolves for now. Yes, Boom. That was pretty effective. All right, and now we're going to have our magical weapon wielders. This one is barely injured, this one is barely injured. Our magical weapon wielders are going to focus on the vampiric wolves. Don't bother me. And that's why we're going to switch to these arrows plus one. And then the non-magical weapon wielders are going to continue with uh, the other wolves. These dread wolves actually are pretty good when it comes to their experience as well. Because they give you 650. And you ran out of your throwing knives again. Fine. I am here. Yes. By your command. Yep, I've done had enough of that. What? Hello? I resisted this time. I didn't say it. <laughs> Alright. So this was... At this point in the game, you know, this was pretty... Pretty painless. Oh, and we got quite a bit of experience, because these Vampiric Wolves gives us 2,000, and the Dread Wolves give us uh, 650. So, quite a bit of experience there. Now let's proceed further east to this basilisk area. Oh, now we get uh, ambushed by this bounty hunter group, and this is Molkar's group. This is not the Amazons, which I had hoped to deal with first. Alright, let's level up Imoen, so she has a little bit more hit points. Oh no, of course <laughs> Of course, she's not going to get any more hit points. She retains her thief hit points, which is one of the cool things about dual classing, especially with if you have a more tougher, sturdier class as your first. That's why dual classing from a fighter is uh, so popular because you know you get all this juicy fighter hit points, and of course you know access to grand mastery and all that good stuff. There's plenty of reasons, but yeah. Now she's going to have access to level 2 spells, and she doesn't have mirror images. Well, let's, let's have web for now. And Branwen leveled up, and Branwen is going to get some additional hit points. This is a pretty good level up for a cleric. Uh, clerics basically get a Thaco reduction of 2 every 3 levels, um, so they don't progress in Thaco um, you know, as fast or as regularly as fighters, but they can still have decent Thaco. The problem with clerics and basically non-warrior classes is the amount of attacks they have because they are stuck with one attack per round, pretty much. So, more spells, nine more hit points, which is nice, and a boost to saving throws. And also a proficiency proficiency point. And I think I'm going to go with Flails and Morning Stars because from this encounter, one of these guys has a Morning Star plus one, so she is actually going to have access to a magical melee weapon uh, once we kill them. Alright, so Halakan is a mage, and I believe Drakkar is a cleric. So I am going to cast Silence to uh, silence this uh, this cleric. 
uh, he is going, I think he's a fighter mage, this Halakan guy, so he's going to like immediately go forth. So trying to get the silence on both of them I don't think is a great idea. And I think uh, Morvin and Molkar here are fighters. They are of course immune to sleep. But I believe only Drakkar with his uh, pre-buffs when they kick in should be immune to fear. So I think once they approach us and um, get a, a little closer to our party... I'm going to buff up with shield, I think. Because there's nothing that great that Sinashira can do. Yes. I could try and aim this... this... Uh, Necklace of missiles around here, maybe, so that uh, our guys are unaffected. What is it? <laughs> and I think I'm going to stay with Imoen because she might have to drink a potion of invisibility because they're probably going to target her, and she needs to get away. So I'm not going to use up her round to cast a fireball or something, because then she will not be able to use anything for six seconds. So he mentions that we've probably, you know, met some worse bounty hunters than his group, I guess. Poor little Sinashira. I assume you're completely clueless as to why you must die. I'm sure it'll be a, about as much trouble as the rest of the rabble we've killed. Alright. So let, let's wait for his buffs to kick in. Yeah, so he has Remove Fear, Bless, Armor, Faith, and Drop on Holy Might. Uh, so, I don't think anyone else has removed fear. Maybe Halakan got that. But now that they are closing in. Also, not sure I got hit by that necklace of missile missiles, but Drakkar did as well. He made a save versus spell, and Sinashira didn't. Alright, anyway. She is now buffed with shield. So she has a better armor class, and of course they they are going right after Imoen. That is why I'm going to give her a potion of invisibility to get her out of that troublesome situation. All right. And now move away. There is a time for talk. This is not such a time. Nature servant aware. You know what, the ranged people should go after the Drakkar, maybe. We'll see how that silence fares. His spell was interrupted, and he is silenced. Okay, everyone now is going to focus on Halakan. Sinashira is getting damaged by quite a bit. Anyway, let's get rid of his mirror images. Go, go, go. Alright, so Molkar is being pretty nasty. Alright, Halakan also copied our strategy and I wasted... Oh my god, because I selected everyone with a hotkey and uh, told them to attack Drakkar. And uh, obviously that wasted her invisibility. Jesus Christ. That is just... Com that is just terrible. <laughs> Alright, since Drakkar is badly injured and Halakan quaffed a potion of invisibility to get out of trouble, let's now focus everyone on Drakkar to finish him off. What can you do? Maybe soften him up. And you try to fear them. Alright, Molkar got feared at least. And did Halakan got... Since he's invisible, I'm not sure... If if uh, yes. he got feared anyway, Drakkar died. So let's continue on the one person that's still fighting against us. All right, Halakan is not feared. He just renewed his mirror images while invisible, and uh, Malkar is just running around feared. All right, what are you casting? Sleep on Jahira. Sleep is not going to be very effective against most of our guys. Kevin is level five. Sinashira is level five. Jahira is level 4, and Branwen is level 4. Uh, well, let's maybe try and move Branwen this way and Jahira that way. Maybe we can avoid that. Alright. 
Let's all attack. Morvin is badly injured and Halakan is also badly injured. Let's let's, let's focus Halakan down. I consider him, him to be more threatening. Because he has an access to mage spells. And now he's dead. Just have Molkar in our vision sometimes when they run away in fear. They can despawn. Alright, and now let's finish them off. That, that went relatively well, I think. Despite my mistakes. Let's just have ranged weapons there. Because melee attackers are never going to be able to like catch up with him to deal damage, really. Alright. So some pretty good experience, some pretty good magical kind of starting loot that they can give you. We're going to just quickly loot them. Yeah, sword plus one. He has a special chain mail. Uh, that's the morning star plus one and some potions. And some scrolls from Halakan. Those scrolls are not particularly impressive, but there was one detect illusion which is can be pretty useful, especially in SCS. Alright, so that's a Morning Star plus one. That's going to be a uh, magical weapon for Branwen. So she won't have to worry about her melee weapon Not breaking concerned. from being brittle. And uh, what else? You can probably ca carry these things. Excuse me. <laughs> very, very professional setup here. Oh, she's encumbered. Alright, now let's continue to this basilisk area. And this is going to be... Oh yeah, the NPC project provides you with a warning that uh, Jahira... Oh, and Branwen, of course, having that experience of being petrified is obviously not looking forward to exploring this area with the basilisks. But yeah, they basically give you some warnings about, you know, if you're not prepared, if you're not protected, you're going to have to face the uh, possibility of getting instant killed by those petrification gazes. Anyway, I think this is going to be it for this episode, and uh, I'll thank you for watching, as uh, always, and I'll see you in the next one.